from Go Exporting. I'm based in the UK and uh, very pleased to, to join you today. And thank you for Alibaba for inviting me to present this uh, webinar based on our booklet, The Seven Steps to Export Success. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of inf information, some ideas about how to start your export journey and how to get to that first million dollars in, uh, in export sales. So we'll, I hope you'll enjoy the, the, the webinar. Um, if you do have any questions, there's a, a Q&A box at the, uh, the bottom or the, of the screen. If you could pop those questions into the Q&A, then I'll, I'll try and answer them either as we go along or at the end of the session, I'll come back to them and, and answer the questions there. So if you could use the Q&A box, then we can uh, take it from there. Okay, so the seven steps to export success, how to fast track your export growth. We're all looking to expand our sales, particularly in these difficult times, COVID times, everyone wants to, to increase their business and looking for new ways of doing that. And expanding into international markets often seems like the easy way to do it or a nice, simple way to, to get going. But there are some things that you need to work to be careful of and to to take into account when you start on an export journey which we'll look at in the next uh, 30 minutes or so but before we do we do that if i could just take a couple of minutes to introduce you to my company go exporting we're specialist export consultants as the name suggests that helps companies to expand um, into international markets to profitably expand I set up the company, I've got over 30 years experience in international trade and export uh, with everything from small businesses through to multinational corporations. And we specialize in helping companies get into new markets um, from export readiness through to assessing opportunities, research to strategy into opening new markets. We've done a lot of work recently on Brexit. Um, that's a big, big, challenge for most businesses in, in Europe at the moment. And we, uh, we help to build remote sales teams. And in, all in all, we've created more than $2 billion in export revenues. And I wrote this uh, book that was based on this, uh, this webinar is based on called Seven Steps to Export Success, which um, can be downloaded from our website, goexporting.com. So what is the seven steps to export success? Like, any, like everything, a lot of companies seem to fall into export, um, but we believe that there's, there should be a structured approach to exporting in a way to make it as successful as possible and to avoid the pitfalls. So we're going to go through some of these steps in, in this particular webinar. Step one is why, why do you want to export? Uh, what are your motivations for exporting? What do you expect to achieve? So we'll look at a little bit of detail why that's important and why you need to analyze that before you get going, before you start. The next one is where, which is one of the big things for, for most people. Where do you start? Which countries do you go to? Which are gonna be the best opportunities for you and your business? And that's, we go through in a, in a detailed way how you, can, um, how you can work out the best places to go. Of course, once you've worked out where, the next step is how. How are you going to do that? How are you going to get into the market? What's your best route to market? Do you use a distributor? Do you do e-commerce from your website? Whatever it may be, we'll look at how you decide um, what is the best route to market for you. And then we're going to concentrate today on those first three steps, which are the most important for getting going. And we will also touch on the, the next four steps. What now is how do you take that um, strategy that you've developed and how do you implement that? What do you do from there? And what do you do once you've got into the market? How do you prepare? How do you go to the go to market? How do you make your first approaches into the market itself? And perfect execution, we call step six. And that's making sure that when you get orders from it from export, they're not just seen as an add on or an additional bit of business that you need to put as much effort into those as you do into your first sale you've ever made to make it perfect execution so that your business will grow. And the final step is once you've actually started growing, what do you do from there? Uh, and how do you, does that change your strategy? How do you reassess? So if we look at the first step of a program is why? Why do we want to start a sale? Well, why export? Because we're going to want to gain additional sales. Of course, that's one of the big things. We can gain economies of scales if we've got um, spare production. 
we can we can you know reduce our unit cost by increasing our production car uh, production quantities we maybe want to reduce our local market dependency maybe we've hit a, a ceiling we can't go any further uh, when we would decide that we want to look at new markets in order to be able to expand. Maybe we've reached a monopoly situation in, in some cases. And it, another thing that export does, it actually drives innovation and helps us to gain competitiveness because we see what the markets are like in other countries, what the demands are like from other countries. And we may even pick up on something from a different country that we can bring back to our home market um, so that we can develop our own product. But of course, in the end of the day, the main thing that we're all looking to do is increase our profits. We're looking to to meet, you know, export so that we can make more money in the end of the day. So the first thing we need to look at is why export? Is export right for your company? You know, what are your motivations to export? If it's just that you want to put pins in, the, in a map or you want to, to travel, you think business travel you know, to different countries will be exciting and, and, you know, and interesting. Well, believe me, I've done it for years and it's, you soon lose that, that gloss of the travel um, and it becomes, it's just difficult. You spend a lot of time in airports, you spend a lot of time, wasted time and getting business in export markets can be difficult. So just to travel is not a reason to, to want to export. You have to have the right motivations. You have to want to increase your business. You have to want to put the effort into it. Export shouldn't be seen just as a, an add-on to your existing business. It's, it's an integral part of it. So if your strategy, if export is part of your strategy, then that's good. That's the way to, to look at it. But you also need to look at what are you looking to achieve and over what period, how long are you prepared to, to invest in your export journey? Um, it may not happen overnight. You, you may have to spend some money to actually get into the market and be patient to, um, to achieve what you want to achieve. So what, have a, an idea in your mind about what that period looks like. What are you looking to achieve? And within that, you need to assess what is your attitude to risk? How much risk do you want to, to, um, to expose your company to, basically? Because, you know, whenever you export, there is some risk. There's some risk of, of costs. There's some risks of you know, um, credit risks and, and so on that can occur, depending on how you do business. But there's always an element of risk when you're, when you're looking to export, when you're going somewhere unknown into a new market. And you also need to understand what resources you can allocate and the time frame that you can allocate them. And by resources, we don't just mean money. We mean the people within your organization. Do you have spare capacity to, to take on new roles or to new additional work? Or would you need to, to increase your, your staffing? What does that look like? What kind of costs would that involve to the business? So you need to look at you know, exactly what allocate, what resources you do have um, and what, who you can allocate, what you can allocate to, to your export business and the kind of time frame that you can uh, put that to. The other thing is, is your organization ready for, for exporting? You know, we, we come across many clients that uh, want to export, but they haven't really explored their home market as yet. They haven't reached a, a critical point and it would just be detracting from their concentration on, on their home market. So are you ready? Is your, export, is your business ready? Is your, are your people ready? And is everyone on board? You know, everyone needs to be on board with this, all the stakeholders, of course, in the business, but also all the staff. Talk to them, make sure everyone's aware of what you're planning, where you're going to go, and what their feelings are about it, and how they can help, and what, what their roles will be, what you expect from them within that, um, within that export drive. And one of the key things you need to look at is will exporting affect your current business? If you're going to lose business in your home market because you're allocating these resources to export, then you really have to assess if that's worthwhile. Are you going to make more money in the export market or are you going to make more money in the home market, more margin? So really think about whether you can effectively um, export your products into, into new markets. So what are the benefits and risks of exporting? We've looked at some of the benefits already, expanding your markets, it spreads your risks to a certain extent away from one market, helps you to use excess capacity, 
can help smooth seasonal demand because the demand for your product, if it's a summer product, you know, there'll be other areas of the world which will be in summer when you are in winter. So you can help smooth out seasonal demand for the product. It helps to broaden your skills, broaden the skills of your organization, people within your organization. And of course, it can lead to significant profits if done correctly. But doing it correctly means you have to understand the risks and you have to be able to plan for those risks and make sure you minimize them. So, so for example, currency, if you're dealing in different currencies, how are you going to manage that? Do you have experience in that? Do you have experience in hedging or having bank accounts in different currencies and so on? What about credit risks? You know, most people think, OK, well, I'll just charge up front for the, for the products. You know, I'll get my money in advance. Sometimes it doesn't work out like that, um, you know, and once you get into a regular supply with a particular customer, they might start wanting um, credit and demanding credit the same as they would get from a local supplier. So you have to take these kind of things into account, the costs of credit insurance, for example. There may be compliance costs, the costs of making your product um, approved, getting the approval in the markets that you're going to. There may be a big cost in that. It may need some alterization or alter alterations to your product to actually do that. Um, there may be language barriers. You know, if you're going to go to China or to Russia, for example, then there can be difficulties. I mean, in many countries, you, there are language issues that you need to to look at and to consider when you're looking at um, the benefits and the risks of exporting. Adaptation costs. Now, what we mean by that is your product might be great for your market it may be ideally suited for your home market but it may not be quite right for another market they may need something different or that the standard might be different or the the expectation might be different i use an example that you know your product might have a green switch for on off whereas in another country they want it to be blue or yellow whatever it might be it's a simple example but uh, those kind of things need to be checked and you need to be sure that your product is right for the markets that you're going to go to. So we always, when with our clients, we always look at doing what we call an export audit. We are either they just recommending they do it themselves or that they get us or another organization to, to have a look at, you know, come in from the outside to have a look. So it's just to ascertain if the organization is actually ready to export. Um, from the top to the bottom. You know, is everyone in the organization ready? Are all your systems ready? Um, do you have the systems in place to be able to cope with export? Do you know about uh, customs declarations, duties, payment mechanisms for international trade and so on? So we look at where are you now? Where is the organization now? And where you need to be? Where do you need to be to, to get into the export markets? We've done a lot of this kind of work for example, with the International Labour Organization, part of the UN, we did work on of this kind in Jordan with uh, companies there to get them to a level where they would be able to export into the European market. But it stands for every company. You need to make sure you're in the right position to, to export into the markets that you want to look at. So what steps do you then need to get to that position? You know, it's planning it. You know, we do a gap analysis of people, products, finance, production, systems, policies, and more. So you get a complete picture of what you need, to, where you need to be to, um, to export. And it's a way to truly understand your business as well. It has benefits for your home business as well by having that fresh look at the business, you, you get a, a you know, true understanding of where you are. Outside eyes looking in and an independent assessment can be very good from that point of view. And it helps to define your export strategy and your target markets because you understand what you can and what you can't do. So that's step one is looking at why do you want to export and where you are. Are you ready for, for exporting? Step two is the, the critical phase that most people want to concentrate on uh, when, they, when they come to us. They say, oh, OK, I want distributors in XYZ country. But you need to be looking at where you're going to export to is very important to pick out the right countries, the right areas. But how do you do that? How do you do assess one country compared to another? You can't be everywhere. You know, even Coca-Cola is not everywhere. So you can't be in every country at, at once. So you need to um, assess where are the best opportunities for your business. 
you can narrow down the options for sure. There's knowledge and logic. We know that the US market, if you're a European country or you know, the Germany is going to be a better market than um than Timbuktu, for example. Uh, you know, there are different there are markets which are going to be better than others. So you know that the size is going to have an, an, an impact there. So you can whittle it down by knowledge and logic. You can also, we recommend assessing your in-house data. Where have you had inquiries from? Uh, so, you know, where, where, where are you getting inquiries from in your, in your business? And uh, you can then look at, um, that will give you a guide as to where there may be interest from, from, your, from your business for your products. How do you learn from your competitors? The, you know, your competitors maybe will be a, a, will be exporting to different countries. They will have maybe they go to exhibitions in different countries. They they um, they have agents. They have distributors. Maybe they're a member of a trade association in, in different countries. So it's important to you can learn a lot from your competitors, and it's a very unused. Um, facility that, that uh, companies have, they don't spend enough time looking at, at what their competitors can do uh, or are doing. You can also look at market research. Of course, that tends to be expensive, but you can, can look at that. Um, you can look at free trade agreements, which countries have, which countries does your country have a free trade agreement with, which makes trade simpler between the two, uh, two areas. And does the size of the market really matter? Well, of course, it's an indication of, of um, where the best markets are, but it's not the, the, the only factor you need to look at. You need to make sure that you're, there are other factors that need to be taken into account, which we'll look at in a moment, such as whether your product's adapted to that market, um, barriers to entry, for example, and so on. So, and what are the country risks in, in going to different countries? Uh, again, that's something which you need to take into account. So barriers to entry, what are they? You need to, to look at the barriers to entry for your product in going into different markets. So for example, product approvals. If you're selling into Europe uh, with certain products, electronic products, for example, you may need CE approval, um, certified European in school. So you, you may need a special certificate to show that your product complies to the relevant standards in the, in the EU. Uh, that applies in many different countries. So you may have to have different approvals in different countries if you wanted to go to many areas at the same time. So where can you realistically go? Where have you already got an approval? Or where do you, um, where, where do you have the ability to get the approval in terms of resources and time that it would be required to actually do that? What about local registration? Sometimes you need to register with a, with locally with a, the government or depending on your kind of products, you may, if it's a, um, for example, a health product, you may have to register that product and have certain types of approvals and licenses in order to be able to, uh, to sell your product to that country. So that's a real, could be a real barrier to entry. So you may have a fantastic size market there, but it could be a real barrier to entry stopping you getting into that market. Customs duties and procedures, you need to be aware of what those procedures are. If the duty is very high, for example, if you're selling to Brazil, often the, the duties are very high there. Uh, you can look at the WTO duty rates and you can see what kind of um, rates are going to be applied to, to your products when you sell. Sometimes it can be as high as 50%, maybe even higher. Uh, some products going into China are 180% duties, for example. And the procedures may be difficult. You may need licenses, you may need approval, depending on the type of product, you may need you know, um, a, a VET certificate and so on. And what about the competition? The competition can be a barrier to entry. You shouldn't be too concerned about competition because it shows there is a market for your product as well, but be aware of what the competition is and assess their strengths and weaknesses and what they can offer what they're offering compared to, to you uh, in terms of pricing as well as in terms of quality and, and features and benefits and the unique selling points of their products. Pricing, again, as we just mentioned, is, is a key area. You know, if your product is, is never going to be able to compete in the market, then it's not worth spending too much time looking at that market unless you've got other uh, 
um, value added that you can offer the, the customers in that particular market. And currency, that can be a barrier to entry as well. If, you know, if you're selling to, uh, to, to Europe and they want to pay in euros, are you, do you have the ability to collect in euros? Um, some countries have restrictions on the amount of foreign currency that they can send out of the country. Um, China, you have to have a license to send money out of the country, for example. So there can be can be difficulties there as well. You need to 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 check and be sure you understand what the implications are of what you're planning to do. Payment terms. What are what are the standard payment terms that are expected? Yes, again, we all think that we'll get money up front or we'll get a letter of credit. And in many cases, when you're starting out, you can do that. But long term, you need to understand, you know, what the payment terms are likely to be, what the demands are likely to be. I had one client we were dealing in uh, Southern Europe and they expected payment terms were 180 days for their particular product. Now, you have to have a good cash flow to be able to accept that kind of risk um, and accept those kind of you know, payment delays. Again, language can be an issue. We need to make sure that we have um, the ability to, to sell in the different languages. We have the brochures, we have our, our, our technical details are in, in those different languages and we can give custom support in different languages as well. We shouldn't assume that everyone is going to speak English, for example. And transport, what are, what are the transport costs of getting your product to a particular market? At the moment, the world is suffering from huge um, shipping issues and increases in costs in shipping. Uh, coming out of China, you know, uh, for example, containers that used to cost $1,500 for to bring a container is now costing $12,000, $13,000 at the moment. So there, there are incredible increases in prices as well as shortages of supply and difficulties in actually getting products out and into different countries. Uh, because of COVID, because of um, you know, the changes that brought and stop, the stop, the stopping of international trade, there's, there's a lot of um, issues around shipping at the moment. So how do you assess then all of these different, different factors? How do you look at the market size um, and all of these barriers to entry? How do you assess whether which is a good market for you to go to? Well, we use what we call the market priority scoring, which allows us to rank different countries so that we can give a you know, clear assessment and decide which are our priorities. So we take each of these factors, market size, for example, growth rate, and we give it a, a rating between one if it's, if it's low. So if the market size is not very good, it would be one. If it was a great market size, it'd be five. But again, if the market is declining, then you need to look at that. So the growth rate, what is the growth rate of the market? And we give each of these factors a weighting um, as well, so that, of how important it is in our final decision. You can change these weightings depending on your own business. These are the ones that we use. Uh, with them, we look at the barriers to entry and go through each of them and say, what well, for that particular country, what are the scorings that we would give from difficult to uh, too easy for, for each of those barriers to entry for us to overcome. Um, and then we look at product ad adaptation to market, whether we're ready to go and so on, brand awareness, country risk. We take all of these things into account and that gives us a final score for a particular country. Um, so in this case, we, with this particular one, we're getting a total score of 16.5. Okay, and you, you may say, well, okay, well, what does that mean? How do we know if that's a good score or not? Well, the way we've worked it out, if you get a score above 16, then that country is a prime target. That's somewhere that you should be looking at and would be you know, one of the first countries we would um, suggest you start looking at when you want to export. From 12 to 16 is a good prospect, medium priority, eight to 12, below eight, really forget it, it's, going, it's not worth the effort to go there or certainly not in the initial stages, unless someone just happens to come to you and wants to buy in that particular country, but don't spend your resources trying to open that market. So we find that a very useful system, a very useful way of assessing different countries, ranking different countries, so you can prioritize where you're going to go to, which markets you're going to uh, spend your time focusing on um, to get your product into the market. 
So once you've decided that, you've decided you maybe have a list of three or four countries that, that you're going to be a priority, but how do you decide um, how to get into the market and how are you going to get into the market? The first thing I have to say is that we, we always say to customers is focus. Don't overstretch yourself. You have to match your ambitions to your resources. There's no point if you're a new start company with one or two people saying, I'm going to sell into 10 countries because you're just not going to be able to do it. You need to concentrate your resources on those markets you can get to where you can do a good job in those markets. You need to serve one market well. It's much better to do that than to sell to serve five superficially. Um, I have an example of a one client that we, we, we were asked to look at. They had um, one salesperson that was covering 32 countries. And on the other side, they had another salesperson that was covering only two countries. But between them, they were both bringing in the same amount of business, but one was bringing in uh, more profits because his costs were much lower and he had much deeper uh, market share, much better market share in those countries. So we reduced the countries of the, of the other person uh, the other salesperson and, and again his sales went sky high because he was able to concentrate on the market and dig deeper into the market that's that's one of the, why we always say you must focus you must dig into the market it takes time and you can't do it superficially and definitely avoid something i hate which i call touch and go selling that's where you decide you're going to go to a market you might spend a month or so a couple of months focusing on that going to the country maybe, you're going to visit people, getting some interest, but then something happens back at home. You have a, 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 you know, a big order or you've got a crisis that you need to deal with. And so you forget about that export market. You don't, you don't put that same effort into it for another two or three months. And then you go back and you think you can pick up where you left off. Well, you know, lo and behold, that, those customers have gone cold. They probably bought elsewhere. And they may be thinking they are not so reliable in the first place. Why would they want to trust you because you keep disappearing? So don't do that. Avoid touch and go selling. You need continuous effort to get into the market. And the other thing is to be patient. Be really patient. Um, it's not always going to happen overnight, um, but it will happen if you do the right things. Yeah, then the next thing is to define your route to market. How are you going to get into that market? If you, maybe most people start thinking, I'll use a distributor or an agent and be aware that there are differences between a distributor and an agent. An agent, you will, you will invoice the end customer and pay them a commission. A distributor will buy from you and sell your product on. Whichever way you do it, what, most, what a lot of companies miss is that that distributor or agent is your biggest customer and they are your customer in that country. They need motivating, they need, um, pushing and, tr and treating in the same way that you would your best customer. The other option is to recruit someone. <clears throat> you can recruit someone from a competitor, maybe. You can look at that. Um, they often will cost you more money because they come with supposedly a whole briefcase full of contacts that they can walk straight into. But often it's not quite as easy as that. Customers don't jump ship just be always because the salesperson's jumped. If they're happy with a customer, the, the, the other company, the, their existing supplier. So be aware, a little bit wary about that, but it's certainly a, a, a good way of, of getting into the market. Of course, you can look at direct sales, e-commerce through an e-platform like Alibaba, of course, which is a fantastic platform for expanding your business internationally. Uh, and can help you very easily get to a lot of different countries without some of these um, you know, difficulties in resources that, that we've been talking about. So Alibaba can really help ease your, your way into, into international business and expose you to a lot of um, different countries and areas. And you could invest in a particular country. That's the, the sort of final option that uh, we help companies with if you want to look at a, a joint venture or an acquisition. But generally, that will be a little bit further down the line. It's not something you're going to do straight away. Assuming that you're going to look at a distributor, which most companies will do if they're not selling direct, then the important thing is to get the basics right. Agree realistic expectations with your distributor. Don't just go off and think, oh, I'll leave them to it and they'll come with some sales. Agree what you think should be, should be able to be achieved in the market, what your targets are. Agree the milestones. 
um, because you don't want to be tied up with a distributor that doesn't do anything. There's no point as just having a flag in the map and saying, oh, you know, these people will, are my distributor there. If they're not bringing any business in, they're, they're useless to you. Avoid giving them exclusivity in the first place if you can. Make it a, you know, a non-exclusive agreement in the, at the beginning uh, and build the business from there. But have clear targets, clear milestones, build them into the contract if necessary. Um, and detail the responsibilities of each so everything is clear um, set pricing and commission levels don't leave anything open basically don't leave anything vague that will come to conflict later on make sure it's 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 clear set minimum stock levels if you expect them to hold stock you know marketing spend what do you expect a distributor to spend on marketing your products because they should be doing that what is the length of the contract payment terms Inco terms is the shipping terms that you use. So who's responsible for what? Who's responsible for paying the shipping in the first place? Who's responsible for the customs declarations when the goods arrive in, in your distributor's country, for example? The recommendation is your distributor is, re is responsible for that. So use what's called DAP terms. Uh, but make sure it's all clear so there's no misunderstandings and there's no difficulties further down the line. But the thing is, as we said, a distributor is your biggest customer, so you need to motivate them. You need to make sure that your products are high on their list of priorities. You know, they, they'll have a range of products that they're working on and distributors will, will inevitably, they'll try and sell what's the easiest to sell and it's giving them the most immediate return. So if your product is going to take a little bit of a little bit more work, you might find they're not quite putting the effort into it that you would like them to unless you're on their backs and you're motivating them to do that and you're having regular contact with them visits video calls and so on make sure that, the, that they you they know that you're going to be following up that you're going to be asking questions i help a number of clients to manage their distributors and i get a you know report from them i have a call with them every month go through the inquiries what's going on what where are the orders coming from you know what's happening in the market so we go through all of those things and you give them incentive give them an incentive to get more sales so they get a higher percentage or they get a bonus if they hit a, hit a particular target make your product the one that they want to sell and again avoid being caught up with a distributor that's not doing anything for your product and definitely avoid the person who says that he's a cousin of the of the prince or the sheikh or something like that because more often than not they won't do anything and they, they, they won't be able to help you product training make sure you've trained the um the distributors make sure that you develop personal relationships with the, the top people yes but also with everyone else in their organization the people that do the admin the people that pay the bills you know the the dispatch people the service people if they have them that kind of thing and praise them you know it's, it's, hey, it's actors that's their big your biggest customer discuss setbacks as well because there will be there'll be disappointments along the way but discuss them openly and how we you can both improve to make sure they don't happen again and again be patient from all that once we've done all that we'll be able to we've assessed all the, the everything we've talked about there we'll be able to define our market entry plan so we'll be able to compile a, we always compile a detailed plan which defines the key elements and objectives um, that we're going to need to be successful so we define what the required financial investment is what are we getting into here what other resources are we going to need to allocate to our export drive uh, we need to know exactly and make sure that we have those resources available. What are the timescales that we're, we're looking at? You know, what are, what are, what are the, our, um, how long is it going to take us to get to market? How long will it take us to get to the first order? How long will it take us to get to break even point? How long will it take us to get to that first million, for example? Plan it, know it, and understand what that level of risk is. And really define what your route to market strategy is going to be. Is it going to be a distributor or agent? Is it going to be your own person? Is it direct? Is it maybe a combination? Uh, but make sure that you understand what your what your strategy is for the short term, but also for the medium term. And build in the milestones. So say, okay, after three months, I want to be at this position. I want to have 
got, got contact with, you know, I want to have signed up a new distributor, I want to have had the first order after five months, for example, or, you know, or five weeks, whatever that time scale is, but set it and, and know what those milestones are and what the expect, expected outcomes are, how much you expect to sell in a particular period or how much penetration into the market you are looking to get. And once you've done that, make sure that everyone in your organization is, is on the same page, that everyone agrees and everyone knows what you're planning. And then review that often. That's the critical thing as well, review it. It may not be quite right, it may not be quite working. So do review it and make sure that um, it's still working. Don't be too quick to change it, but do make sure that you review it to make sure that there's not something that you've missed or, or that you know, the situation has changed and you should be changing strategy a little bit. So that's the first three steps of our program. So we've gone through the um, why, why do we want to export? You know, what's, what's the benefits of exporting for us? We've looked at where, how to, how to decide where to export to. And then we've looked at how, how are we going to do that? What do we, you know, what do we need to do? What's the route to market? What, what do we need, you know, what's the best way of doing that? And how do we put that together into one plan so that we have something to work to, a, you know, a template for us to work to with milestones and, uh, and targets and, and KPIs so that we know that we're doing a good job and that we're on the right track. It's critical that we have that and then it's a very structured approach all the way through. Don't just fall into exporting. It's going to take time and it's going to take effort to be successful at it. So the other steps in our program, what now and so on, prepare and go, perfect execution, grow and slow. And more once you, you've, you've decided where you're going to go to, I think you, know, you can read those in our, in the, if you download the, um, the seven steps from goexporting.com. Uh, we maybe we, we can do another webinar on those as well. We don't have the time in this one, but uh, just briefly what now is, you know, you're looking how to implement your plan. You've decided what your plan is, how are you going to get to market, and a nice strategy is all well and good, but you need a plan of action too. Who's going to implement it? You know, how are you, how are you going to um, actually get that plan to work? And as we've said, it's very important. You may need some external help. You may not have the internal resources. You may need a company, you know, like ourselves that can help you with it. Or you, or you need, may need more people to, to be able to do it, but decide how you're going to do it, who's going to lead the charge, who's going to be responsible, make someone responsible for, for it. And then once you've done that and you've decided that, it's prepare and go. You need to prepare for your first visits, your first forays into that country, into, the, into the, your target markets. You know, understand what your value proposition is for your product that you're going to push forward to, to your customers and how to take those first steps and uh, making your first visits, plan it properly, really prepare it and, and go. And say so we can get, it goes into a lot more detail of this in the booklet and obviously we can, uh, when we do webinars on these particular points. Once you get your first orders, make sure it's perfect, make sure you execute it perfectly and uh, ensure 100% customer satisfaction. If it isn't 100%, make sure you deal with it. That's equally important. If you deal with it well, then that can put you in good stead for the future. This, people start to trust you. Sometimes it can be good if something doesn't go quite right, as long as you deal with it properly. Build up references and case studies. Um, yeah, and all, make sure you ask the questions. When's it, can I have some more business? That kind of thing. Build on your success. That becomes your catapult to stage seven where you decide whether you want to grow or you want to take it slowly. And we go through how to make those kind of decisions. So that's all available in our uh, free download. It's free on goexporting.com, the fast track guide and seven steps checklist to exporting, which we've, as I say, we've just been through the, the first three steps in detail, but there are another four for once you start in your, your export journey. So thank you very much. I think that's about all we've got time for today, but I'll, I will look at some of the questions now in the, in the Q&A and see if we can answer those. Um, thank you for sharing really helpful information, great tips. Well, thank you very much, I appreciate that. Um, I've been meaning to start exporting. How do I know if my products will sell in a certain market? Yeah, well, I think we've, we've looked at um, some of the ways you do that is by looking at uh, the competition, looking at the market size, 
for your particular products, looking at how well your products adapted to the market. You need to understand the market. You need to do a little bit of market research. Um, often your, your embassy in that country will help you with some information as well, or you can use the commercially available market research, which can be very expensive, or you can use um, you know, an export consultant that can help you do some, some research and assess the market as well. But yes, you, you need to you need to check. You need to we we do for clients what we call a customs and compliance report as well. So you can look at whether the product is, you know, you know what you need to do to make it comply with with the the regulations in the countries that uh, that you're going to. So you have to go through it systematically and make sure that you you check through the product. Uh, Great tip. Thank you for the reminder on patience when trying out a new market. Yes. So, well, this is a very important point. Uh, and it's, um, uh, you know, things don't always happen overnight. And just because you decided to go to a new market doesn't mean they're going to throw out their, their current suppliers and come immediately to you. So you do need to, to make sure that um, you have that patience. But equally, as we've seen, you need to make sure that you've planned for that and you've resourced that and you understand that it's going to take that amount of time and that you, you're able to, to be able to take that time for the, the resources you're committing to that export drive in the first place. What's the best way for you to master the basics? What's the best tip um, you would give to a beginner? Um, the best tip I would give to a beginner is, is that to, to be patient is, is to do your research, to be to plan, to be systematic. I think that's that's the key thing, is, is not just to rush in. It's easy to get excited and think, right, I'm going to jump on a plane or I'm going to sell something here. Um, it's it's to, to take a deep breath and, and really plan in a, in a structured way which markets are going to be best for, for you, for, you, for your products, uh, and are going to give you the best returns. Uh, also, you know, you, you will find that you'll get people that just come to you that want to, uh, want to be a distributor in particular countries. And it's, it's often tempting to just say yes, because you haven't got anyone else in those countries. But be a little, little bit careful about that. You don't want to tie yourself up um, for, or, you know, in a country before you even, you even explored it. So always try and start with a, with a distributor on a non-exclusive basis. So you've got that option to, to go back. But the best tip I can give you is, is to be structured to analyze it in a, in a particular way and plan it very well, what you're going to do. Um, Heather, thank you, you're welcome. Uh, okay, and thank you for the great inf information. I think that's, that's all the questions that we have at the moment. If anyone else has got any questions, we've got a couple of minutes, we'd be prefer to, happy to answer, but no, if not, we'd like, I'd like to say thank you very much for your time. Thank you for, for joining us today. I hope you found it uh, interesting and, and useful. Please do download the um, from our website, the full booklet, and you know, look at Alibaba is a great way of getting your product out and into international markets. So make sure you're using that to to its fullest. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>